Hi, I'm John Fidel, and you're watching the second episode of Boys Don't Knit. I'm super excited about this episode because I finally get to show off all of the knitting projects I've been working on for the past few weeks. The first thing I want to get into is current events, the things that I am doing right now currently that have to do with yarn, and, or just knitting in general. And the first thing is getting rid of my stash. So I'm not just throwing away my stash or giving it away to people or anything like that. I am trying to work through all the projects I have been building up. I buy yarn like crazy, especially while I was working at Michael's. And I would just buy yarn because I thought it was cool or I had an idea in my mind of what I wanted to do with it and I would never do anything with it. And that was over the past three years. So, uh, And for me, I'm always on a budget, so crazy means a duffel bag full of yarn. And it's a really good sized duffel bag. It's a duffel bag that my mom gave me that she got from the casino. and. I think there was a project for my friend Jessica, there's like a project for my boss or my ex-boss. Uh, there was a few just, I really liked the way they looked and I wanted to make something with it. So I will be working through it. And I think the two projects I'll be showing you today uh, are from that stash. The other thing is that, well, it has to do with the duffel bag. I, the main part was reserved for the yarn, but the little side pockets and things like that are where I kept all my tools. Like one pocket is dedicated to the, um, the straight needles, the second pocket was dedicated to all the double pointed needles, the third was my um, circular needles, and in the very back there was my crochet hook since I don't really use them. And then some like crochet thread, which I got for some reason, and I still don't know. I think I, I kind of wanted to learn crochet a little bit, but I never did it. And I need a better organization because what happens is if I want like my size 10 and a half double point needles, I kind of, it's a little bit of a hassle to reach into my closet and drag it out every time I want something. So I would just reach in there and blindly just try to guess what I'm getting. Like, a, this feels like a 10 and a half, then I pull out an 11. This feels like a 10 and a half, but it'd be like a 10. So I decided to look up knitting, uh, sewing patterns for knitting needle cases. And I came up with this one. This is the DP roll uh, knitting pattern by Laura Balencia. And I really like the way it came out. You can get a closer look. It's the design. It kind of caught my eye. And then I chose all the colors, like the ribbon and everything based off of this outside um, print. So let me see if I can unroll this so you guys can see what it looks like. And there you go. I'm really like happy with the way it came out. Like I think the colors and the inside work and kind of match the, the outside. And there's only a few flaws, but I mean, it's only something I'm gonna use. There's still a few things I think I have to do to it, like maybe sew it on the top blue parts, this way that blue part stays over the needles. And I also need to get me a pair of 15 so I can finally have a whole set. And the pattern, the measurements that it's giving you for the fabric it needs, um, the measurements don't really correspond with the fat quart, but I figured you get a fat quart, you cut it in half, and then sew, sew those two halves together, uh, it will be long enough to do this project. And that's what I did. And I saved a bunch of money doing that, rather than getting it cut from the uh, actual yardage. Because the craft store I went to, I think the fat yards are normally like $1.99, and they were on sale for $1.26, plus I had a 15 additional 15% 15 off of sale items. So with all of the supplies to make this, I think only costed me like around six bucks, yeah. And yeah, it takes a little while to get it all nicely put together like this, but it's better than wondering if did I lose a set of needles? Now every time I look at it, I know that I have all my needles. So if there's something missing, I know that I have to go send out a search party, release the hounds, AKA my chihuahuas to go looking for them. Now I want to get into what I finished so far. Uh, I have finished two projects recently. The first one is going to be the Fenced In Hat by Tracy K. I did this in the Patton's Wool, Patton's Classic Wool Roving in the Pacific Teal colorway. This is what it looks like. You can get up close to it. Like that. And I really like the way it came out. 
So it's a little bit more snug than when I usually wear my beanies, but you know what? It's a nice fit. So I think it might need to be a little bit bigger if I let my hair grow out. So I might make another version of this since I have a good amount of this yarn left over from my stash. And uh, just use, instead of using a number 10 needle, use a 10 and a half. I'm also gonna show you a picture of what the top looks like right here. And I really love the way it looks on top, but no one's ever gonna see that though, because I am six foot, so it's like, unless one of maybe my friend Dave may see it from the top one day, but that's pretty much the only person I can think of that's taller than me that would actually be able to make out what that is. And then I got crazy hat hair. Now, I also have this yarn in my stash. This project is the Nicholas Scarf by Jane Richmond, and it was made out of the Loops and Threads Tempo Yellow Sunshine colorway. If it looks familiar, it's because this is what my intro and my outro, uh, the background photo is. It's a really colorful yarn. I like the way that it came out, and I've been looking to put more color into my outfits. This is the way it would look when I wear it. Let's see. And I think this is a really good project for beginners. The reason why is because uh, it doesn't use buttonholes. You use a really um, large needle, like a size, I think it tells you a size 11. I end up going with a size 13 to reach gauge. So since you use such a large needle, you can just push your buttons through and it fits just fine like that. So like I said, I need more color in my outfits. I have really interesting t-shirts and things like that, but I don't really have anything colorful. Now for what I have on the needles. I decided, I like I said, I, I'm not supposed to be buying any more yarn, but I wanted to have a gray hat. So I decided to start again the Who Hat by Sarah Omoroso. And I'm doing this in the Karen's uh, Vicky Howell's sheepish and the grayish colorway. So this is what it looks like so far. I have the torsos of the owls made so far, but that's pretty much it. And it seems like it's going to fit my head pretty well because it fits my mannequin head kind of loose. As of right now, this is my mannequin head. It's a very much smaller head than I am, so I know if it fits this well, it's probably not going to fit me. If it fits it loose, then it's probably going to fit okay on me. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I originally made it for my friend Stephanie for her Christmas gift, and that came out really well. But I did that one in the Simply Soft in the gray colorway that they have. This one is with, uh, it's I think it's 70% wool, no, 70% acrylic, 30% wool. So it's acting a little bit different than the 100% um, acrylic in a few different ways. But I'm liking the way it's coming out so far. And when it came out the first time, I actually wanted to keep it, but... I told Stephanie I was going to give it to her, so I couldn't keep it. <laughs> I should have just not told her about the project. I'm just like, oh yeah, it's taking me a long time to get your gift made. But once I have that done, I plan on doing one of two projects next. The well, One of two projects next. And the first one is the All Day Barrette by Debbie Stoller. And I'm going to be doing this in the Stitch Nation Full of Sheep in the Passion Fruit colorway. Now this project was... Again, from the same stash that I've been talking about in the past, I actually bought the yarn and everything to do a scarf for my friend Jessica. And I even told her that I was doing it for her and that you know she should expect a surprise in the mail. That was two years ago and she never got it. So <laughs> hopefully I can give it to her, uh, you know, this way she can use it either just for looks or, you know, next winter. And then after that, I'm going to be doing the Kerchief Cowl by Adriana Cray. And this I will also be doing in the Patton's Classic Wool Roving in the Pacific Teal. And the reason I'm really looking forward to this as well is because it's going to be using short rows. And I've been wanting to do short rows for quite some time, especially since I saw this craftsy video by Carol Feller. And I was thinking it was going to be really difficult, but just like Carol Feller said, it wasn't difficult at all, and I was able to do short rows. Uh, a little, you could kind of tell that there were short rows in there, but it was my first time and I was super nervous about it. So hopefully this time when I do the cake or chip cowl, I will be a pro by the end of it. 
And that's what I usually try to do with all of the techniques that I learn. I don't like to just look at a book and say, oh, I'm going to try to master this technique and just do practice swatches. I usually always pick a pattern that uses that technique over and over again. So this way I can really get it down in my head and know that, okay, this is how you do it. That's exactly what I'm doing with that hoop hat that I showed you. It's the way they make the owls is they use a bunch of cabling. And so this has been really implanting in my brain how to do cables without a cable needle. Because I don't like having a cable needle because I have to put the stitches on, throw it back, I knit or purl, whatever I have to do, then knit on and purl off the off the um, cable needle. And I feel like that takes a lot of time. And especially with this hat right here, so you can see it's cables after cables after cables, and this hat went by pretty fast, and so is this time. Right? The first time I did the, the Who hat, it went really slow, but now it's going a lot more faster now that I know how to cable without a cable needle. So if any of these patterns interest you or you like the way that they look and you have any questions about them, you're more than welcome to ask me, but I will be leaving links to them in the show notes that are at the bottom of the video. So whatever... Um, Everything from the DP Needle Roll by Laura Balsina to the very last one I went over, which is the Caker Chip Cow by Adriana Cray. They're all really great projects, and you can just look for them for yourself and see if there's something you feel comfortable doing. Like, I always like to push myself outside of my comfort level. This way I can learn something. First time I did that owl hat, oh, it was a nightmare. I was messing up left and right, but afterwards I was really happy with it. And I'm like, wow, I'm doing really well with cables. And so, like I said, if you feel a little intimidated by a knitting, if it's a little intimidation, I say go for it. And if you mess up, you mess up. You at least you'll learn something in the process. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I hope you liked everything I showed you and my work that I was doing. If you have any questions, like I said before, feel free to ask me. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next episode.